The vast land in the western axis of Uganda is the present-day Queen Elizabeth National Park, renamed in 1954 following a visit to the park by the British monarch. The tour coincided with the commissioning of Kazinga Channel Bridge, which for the first time connected Ankole in the east to Toro Kingdom to its west. By that time there were no bridge and uh, people were using small canoes to cross people from Ankole to Toro. So that, that bridge we have right now, there were bridges which were used during the Second World War. So after the Second World War, the bridge was donated to Uganda and specifically be put there. Kazinga was what it was named two years before it was again renamed. In 1952, these two game reserves were merged because in the game reserve, there is human manipulation. People can gather firewood, People can get uh, some medicinal plants. Within the park are three lakes, one of them the salty Lake Katwe, and the two others renamed after Queen Elizabeth's father and uncle, George and Edward. George was Queen Elizabeth's father who became king after Edward abandoned his right to become king in favor of his brother. These lakes had the names before. One was called Dweseba, and that one was called Dweru. So, but let alone, the names were changed uh, for the popularity. But after Queen Elizabeth and these names were uh, made here, what happened was we attracted so many tourists to come. The elevated land in the park dubbed Queen's Pavilion was the first point of stop after she landed at the grounds of what was a fish factory some distance away. It is in this shelter at the pavilion grounds that Queen Elizabeth held a meeting with three traditional leaders of Toro, Ankole and Bunyoro. By then, uh, uh, the whole of this Sikasese area was under Toro Kingdom and uh, Ankole Kingdom, the other side, she met all these leaders, the kingdoms here, including Bunyoro. And uh, when she came, uh, in remembrance, in commemoration of her visit, they, we decided, the country decided that the park name changes from Kazinga National Park to Queen Elizabeth National Park. The park management have provided an opportunity for tourists to pay respect to Queen Elizabeth with a condolence book opened at the pavilion. Her loss is a big blow to this park. One, the icon alone, the name alone has marketed this park. And you know, those years, this park used to be the most visited. It's, most of, it's one of the premium parks with a, a lot of attractions, like the guide explained to you, is something that we need to uh, remember her for. And uh, that is the reason why we have opened this condolence book for the world to come and uh, condole with us as we have lost an icon of this park. They intend to hold on to the name even after the demise of the queen and even with many calling for colonial names to be abandoned. The name is to stay on. The name is to stay on in such a way that we commemorate. Because if the bridge was uh, officiated in 1954, if we change the name, will you remove the bridge? No, the name has to stay. It rejuvenates us. It makes us remember what we went through during the colonial period. The positive and the negatives. Two, uh, these countries and uh, these individuals those who are alive, those who are not alive, are still supporting us. UK is giving us a lot of aid. They are supporting us in very many areas. So I don't see any reason why you should remove a name of a colonial person. The park is a home to some 600 bird species and 95 species of wild animals. Tourist numbers at the park are yet to hit the pre-COVID-19 times of up to 80,000 visitors annually. Jackson Onyango, reporting for NTV in Queen Elizabeth National Park.